In this lecture, what we're going to be doing is kind of continuing down the path that we started in our previous lecture. Obviously, I spent a lot of time talking about grading procedures and the general design of this class. As you might have noticed in our previous lecture, that I didn't really spend a lot of time defining what psychology was all about. And we're going to remedy that issue in this particular lecture when we explore not only how to define psychology, but also some of the different things related to careers in psychology and branches of psychology that we want you to be aware of as you progress through this course and potentially through future classes in psychology. So let's get started. I'm going to start off in kind of an unusual way. What I'd like you to do in order to get a better sense of what our class is going to be all about, is take a journey back into your childhood. If you could, I'd like you to go as far back as you can and try to assess the first you that started having aspirations of future careers or things that you might potentially get into. Essentially, go back to when people used to ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? and some of the answers that you would provide with to people. Some of you might have wanted to be a firefighter, or a business person, a doctor, There's probably a multitude of different areas that you potentially wanted to get into. I want you to think about that career for just a second. Now, if we were in an in-person class, I'd have you sharing it with individuals, and usually people would get some good laughs about some of the different professions that we wanted to be in, and then I'd survey the class. And I'm guessing we'd find that about a quarter of the class intended to be doctors, another quarter wanted to be things like pilots or astronauts, there were probably some police officers and firefighters and maybe people who wanted to get into business or marketing or, or design, probably a few people also aspiring to be professional athletes. We have a very usually predictable split of the different professions that people wanted to get into. But what we also find almost every single time is that when people are listing the jobs they want to get into, very few people when they're that age talk about wanting to be a psychologist or getting into something even related to this area of People in psychology are somehow hurt or offended when they find out that nobody had interest in becoming a psychology major or a person in psychology when they were young. But it does bring us to a really interesting effect. And that's the fact that even though not only most children don't have intentions of being psychology majors, <coughs> also a large number of individuals by the time they even get into college don't have aspirations of getting anything into anything even closely related to psychology. But by the time people get to the end of their college careers, an astonishingly 5 to 10 percent, depending upon the school that you're looking at, of majors within each college program tend to be psychology majors. That's an extremely high percentage of students suddenly changing their minds when they get from high school into college about the career paths that they want to go down. And this might lead you to ask this wonderful question of why. You know, why are so many people, when they get into their freshman and sophomore years, suddenly infatuated with psychology? What is it that makes psychology this really interesting, alluring thing for so many people? psychology what it is, well, this brings me to the next activity that I'd like for us to do. And that's to try to figure out what we think about psychology coming into this class. And if somebody says they're a psych major, what are the first thoughts that come to mind? When they talk about their career aspirations, which options do you think they have? And also within that realm, you know, how do we cut up a psychology major as an undergraduate institution? How is it all divvied up so there are that many people pursuing careers in psychology when they get into their freshman and sophomore years? Now, I know that some of you are intended psych majors, so this question's probably a little unfair in comparison to people that are just taking this on a whim, but I'm guessing even with that knowledge, trying to define what a psych major is and the paths that are out there might be a little hazy for a large number. 
its psychology, the definition of it is extremely broad. Anybody studying in a scientific way the functions of the mind and human behavior are called psychologists. But this means that we can study a multitude of different things from a multitude of different angles and all call ourselves the same exact things. People, when they get into psychology as a major, after they've taken an intro class, is that there's so many different paths that you can go down once you start to pursue a career in psychology. Within almost every major research institution, there will be offerings of not only cognitive and social and personality psych classes, ones that many people think of when they think of psychology, but also classes in things like developmental psych, clinical psychology, at least introductions into clinical psychology, and some maybe special fringe courses that kind of pick people's interest in topics even if we're maybe not going to be professional clinical psychologists after finishing them. There's also people that still teach behavioral or sometimes what we call learning psychology courses. Others that specialize in emotion or stereotypes and prejudice. In essence, the bigger the school, the more paths you have to go down when you're pursuing a psychology degree. And this brings us, by the time we get done with psychology as a major, to a really interesting juncture where lots of people have taken a wide range of different classes and they all call themselves psychologists. And they're all aspiring to do something usually psychology related after they're done with college. Then what can we do with a psych? Well, usually when people start pursuing a psychology major, they're doing it because they start to aspire to get into some type of career that's related to psychology. And a spectrum of things that people in psychology can get into is very broad. Some of us can get into marketing and business and other kind of more kind of socially oriented companies and, and programs by the time we're done with psychology. Others can focus more on the sciences when they get into neuroscience or psychopharmacology or, or even nursing and medicine, things that maybe we don't think of as intuitively linked to psychology, but many people in the psych major do go down those paths uh, while they're in undergraduate degrees and also, and this is more importantly, <coughs> after they finish those undergraduate degrees. And this is a big Our bachelor's degree in psychology there's lots of different things that we could potentially pursue most of those things though are the exact same things people with economics majors or nursing majors or health public health public policy majors are also pursuing essentially a bachelor's degree will give you the prerequisite training to get into a lot of different professions, but most of those professions are not psychology specific. Instead, to become a specialist in some specific branch of psychology because it's such a broad field and there's so many different things to explore, we need to get some type of post-baccalaureate education. Now, historically, the thing that lots of people pursued for these things called master's degrees. And you can get your master's in counseling or your master's in ergonomics or industrial organizational psych or something else that's very related to psychology but also specific at the same time. And there's still a number of master's programs that are out there that can lead to careers that do definitely relate to psychology. But as time has progressed, Lots of individuals that want to call themselves psychologists, that specialize in some area linked to psychology specifically, tend to go beyond just the masters. They get into sometimes PhD, other times PsyD routes. Uh, technically, you also have medical degrees that relate to psychology and, and legal degrees that link up to psychology as well. But if we're going past our masters, usually people are getting into either some type of therapeutic, clinical psychology area, educational psychology area, 
or research-based area that specializes in whatever we've really become interested in, be it cognitive psychology, development, neuroscience, clinical psych, uh, the, the I guess areas that we could potentially get into if we're interested in research and research-oriented careers, like say in a college, are not necessarily boundless, but vast. There's lots of different options that people start to pursue when they start thinking about the PhD option. But obviously all these things take considerable time. Most master's programs are at least two years long, and then there's usually some type of an internship that follows. Most PhD programs average around five to six years if you're on top of things, and many individuals getting into these programs are considering things like children, other life changes that tend to stretch those five to six years, sometimes out in seven to ten years. In essence, there's lots of different options that we can get into, but each of them really prolongs our pursuit of lots and lots of education in order to apply what we're learning in these areas to our lives and the careers. And this brings me to another really important question, and that's after hearing about all this, why are you here? And what prompted you to sign up for this class? I'm well aware that a number of you might be interested in psychology as a major, or maybe even are declared psychology majors, and this might kind of be an odd question to ask, but I know there's also another of other, number of other individuals that are just taking this class on a whim. And it might lead you to ask, why am I? For all of our non-majors in the class, I'm hoping you understand that there's a lot that you can get out of this course, even if you're not intending to pursue a career in psychology. But for our intended majors, there's lots of specific reasons why, not only do we want you to take an intro to psych class, but we want you to take it earlier. If you know which path you wanna take, a psych major can be catered in a really good way to help you pursue some of those post-baccalaureate programs that you might be interested in. And moreover, if you take an intro class early enough, you're gonna develop some of the tools and skill sets that you'll need to be successful in future psychology courses, regardless of which path you choose. Now for our non-majors, even if those aren't big aims for you, as I mentioned, there's still a lot of utility in this class. One big thing that's really important in an intro to psych class is we get you exposure to some very popular and also impactful topics that psychologists have explored over the years. In essence, my hope is that when you're done, you're going to find lots of applications from what we're covering in the, the wide variety of classes in numerous aspects of your life. And hopefully in knowing this information, you'll be able to better appreciate and kind of understand those components to your life. Another reason why we tend to want you to take this class early is it should be a pretty fun class. Lots of people, even if they don't intend to be psych majors, enjoy exploring the human mind and just better understanding what makes us tick. And that's exactly what you do within this major and within this class. It gives you the opportunity to maybe come home and talk to your family members, or maybe if you're in the dorms, roommates, about what psychology is all about and what you learned in classes and actually have a chance of having them listen not just having them kind of turn you off because they're not necessarily familiar with what it is you're talking about. In this sense, it's a very applicable and interesting area that hopefully if you take this class, you can learn more about yourself and well appreciate more about how research in this branch of study is actually done. So how are we going to address all of this information then? As I've kind of alluded to a couple times, we are going to sample a lot of different branches of psychology within this class. And when we sample these areas, I'm usually gonna to try to attack them in two different ways. I'm usually going to start with some type of historical perspective. We're gonna look at famous names, some of the early precursors to the development of these branches of psychology. And that can give us a lot of context to where these things came from and why we study what we study. 
But after we do that, my hope, my aim is to always give people a slightly more current perspective of what it is that these branches of psychology are all about now. Obviously, these are ever-changing things, but if we can leave this class with a broad understanding of what's, say, the difference between clinical psych and cognitive psych and personality psychology and social psychology, you're going to be better suited to, to kind of understand not only future classes and future options, but yourself a little bit better. So again, we're going to go over the different areas of psych, cover the past, and the current, so you have a lot more knowledge after you leave this course. Now that we've done kind of this introduction to what the class is all about, we're gonna change gears just a little bit and spend some time talking about where psychology came from in the first place. Kind of a backward approach to this in comparison to what we'll be doing in future classes. So I encourage you to review this. It's not a very long lecture. The next one won't be extremely long either, maybe 20, 30 minutes. It's a little different when I'm just lecturing into a microphone versus standing in front of a class. So you should have ample time to review this a couple times. And when you're done, and you've done the readings, move on to the history of psych and hopefully we'll cover some pretty fun stuff. Until then, take care. I'll be speaking with you hopefully over this microphone pretty soon. Bye all.